but she's on a program. And so she could go away. And, yeah, be... Can I just uh, emphasize what Carol was saying, is that our knowledge about diseases that changes with time as we learn more and more about a particular condition. And she was emphasizing that uh, what is AS and what is pre-AS. And because we define in textbook ankylosing spondylitis as X-ray changes in the sacroiliac joints, that doesn't mean to say that's the definition for all time. As we discover more about ankylosing spondylitis, we're going to change our definitions. And some of those that we're doing this morning was pre-AS, which is ankylosing spondylitis symptoms in a person who's got no sacroiliac changes on X-rays. And therefore, this will change our definitions of the uh, disease condition. So, Carol Sinclair probably has pre-AS if her sacroiliac joints, if I remember correctly, they are clear. Uh, but she has all these symptoms that she told you about. And being a, and a person who complains of the symptoms is a patient, and the patient needs to be treated. And it's no use for a doctor to say that there's nothing wrong with you because you don't fit my definition of ankylosing spondylitis. One must treat her condition. And the question is, what diagnosis is she going to apply? We were suggested that the diagnosis would be pre ankylosing spondylitis. Now, I don't want to go back through the problems of molecular mimicry, but uh, we, I want to go to the actual disease uh, onset. We discover that the microbe involved in uh, ankylosing spondylitis is one that has sequences resembling HLA-B27. <coughs> in ankylosing spondylitis patient, the microbe is Klebsiella, and this was the first report in 1976 at the HLA and Disease Congress held in Paris. And uh, we, since that time, we've published about 80 papers on ankylosing spondylitis and some 40 papers on rheumatoid arthritis. Um, now, the uh, two molecules in Klebsiella that show molecular mimicry, one cross-reacts with HLA-B27, and the other one cross-reacts with spinal collagens. And the one with the spinal collagens is pulmonase A, and in it it has sequences which resembles collagen 1, 3, and 4, which is fine in the spinal uvea, and gives rise to uveitis and iritis. And pulmonase D and nitrogenase reductase, which are two separate enzymes, uh, have molecular mimicry to, uh, to HLA-B27. The pull D was found by us, and the nitrogenase reductase was found by Old Stone's group from La Jolla in California. And here's the molecular mimicry. At the top is B27, and the middle one is uh, pull D, and the bottom one is the nitrogenase molecule of Klebsiella. So there is molecular similarity. And the presence of autoantibodies to these uh, antigens uh, makes AS an autoimmune disease, so we need to remove these antibodies to achieve uh, a therapeutic effect. And the way the antibodies cause the disease is that uh, you have to activate the complement cascade, and the complement cascade is activated when you have two adjacent antibody molecules sitting on an HLA-B27 target. If there is only one antibody, then the complement will not be activated, there will be no inflammation no fibrosis, and no spondylitis. However, when there's a high teeter of antibodies, then there will be two adjacent uh, uh, tails of these antibodies, which will activate C1Q, the complement cascade. C9 will then punch a hole in the target tissue, in the spinal joints, in the spinal uh, sacroiliac joints, and cause inflammation. And this is where the tumor necrosis factor comes in, because once you have cell death, the inflammation is the body's response to tissue injury, and so you're bringing in these 400 cytokines. One of those is tumor necrosis factor, and its function is to break up this dead tissue into components, amino acids, which then re-enter the metabolic pool. Now, if you inhibit this degree of inflammation by anti-TNF-alpha, yes, it works. But you haven't stopped the initial trigger factor, which is the anti antibody, which is responsible for the disease. And repeated waves of inflammation will lead to scar formation in your spine, so you end up with the shape that you have uh, in your spinal tissue, and the end result is ankylosing spondylitis. And the classical definition is uh, x-ray changes in the sacroiliac joints. And my point is, why wait till you get sacroiliitis 
when we could start treating an HLA B27 positive person with symptoms very early in the onset of the disease. So for that we require a new definition of the disease. I think I did mention to you that uh, uh, we had antibodies to HLA B27 in ankylosing spondylitis patient uveitis in Dutch patients with AS. The rheumatoid arthritis did not have antibodies and here we have the HLA B27 positive control. Some of them, these are healthy blood donors in Amsterdam, already have elevated antibodies to Klebsiella microbes. And the B27 negative ones, you can see here, and this is the 95% confidence limit of the B27 negative blood donors from Holland. Uh, we then 